Kuksa Seishul means a beach with white sands and green pine trees, and it's the popular scene of Japanese shores. This pine forest has protected us from strong sandy winds from the sea. Most coastal pine woods were uprooted by the tsunami. Were these pine woods really useful for avoiding the effects of disaster? Would the same thing have happened if the forest was constituted of another kind of tree? Some kinds of tree have withstood the enormous impact of the tsunami. What is the difference between the pine and these trees? Mr. Akira Miyawaki is the foremost expert of botany. He has offered advice on planting trees in over 1,700 different places and planted 40 million trees until now. Mr. Miyawaki says that it is the authentic forest that can save our lives. The natural forest is one formed by layers of natural environmental resources after human influences cease. This is called potential natural vegetation. This forest native to the soil has survived all the earthquakes which inescapably hit quake-prone Japan, as well as tsunamis, great fires, typhoons and floods which have occurred over the past hundreds and thousands of years. Something authentic is lasting and surviving. It's something that resists all natural disasters. Now these forests are becoming scarce and what I would like you to understand is that now everything, not only forests but food and drink also, must be oriented towards authenticity. Even weeds are living things, and in this way, we are all in the same situation. Something authentic survives, even in the harshest environment, withstanding any disaster. Creating forests that protect life, the green tide embankment. At the time of the disaster, I was actually in Java, in Indonesia. Hearing the news, I hurried back to Japan, and I found that what I had seen of the disaster through television, radio and photos did not at all compare with the realities I saw at the actual stricken areas. And just when people believed that everything could be brought under human control, with our great advances in science and technology, nearly 20,000 people were robbed of their precious lives in an instant. And to be alive, this is the most important thing, and that's the same for biology. It's not by chance that we are alive today. Mr. Miyawaki came back from Indonesia and started to conduct a field survey with Mr. Hioki, the head priest of Ninnoji Temple in Sendai, soon after the disaster of March 11. They did an intensive survey in Sendai, Natori, Tagajo, Shiogama, Matsushima, and Kesenuma in Miyagi Prefecture, and the Kuzen Takata, Ofunato, Kamaishi in Iwate Prefecture. It was the forest of Tabunoki that survived at the coast which was hit by the tsunami. Their thick body, firm root, and pliancy enabled them to withstand the impact of the waves. This building was protected by a green wall made by Mr. Miyawaki in 1993. 
The green wall is constituted of tabernuki, oak trees and wild camellia, which were planted on a mound made by timber waste. Uh, the, the, the tsunami really was massive. Uh, it destroyed all of these buildings and as you can see it actually reached higher than uh, these trees which are native to this area. Uh, you can see here a tabunoki tree. Um, these trees, shi, tabu and kashi, these are all actually adapted to the, to the soil in this area. And I, and I mean, you could say uh, that these trees formed a green wall, but unfortunately it was only one metre uh, wide. So these evergreen native trees were really reliable. Um, but they stopped the huge amount of debris just here. If it not had been for these trees, uh, the debris would have been washed away and smashed into those houses over there. They would have been ruined, destroyed. The tsunami, 15 metres high, struck Minami Sanniku town. Over 75% of the Shizugawa area was destroyed by the disaster, but the Tabunoki trees in this area survived. Almost all of the forests native to the Japanese islands, those authentic forests consisting of Urajirogashi and Akagashi trees that are green in winter, I mean these forests have almost all but vanished. Though the iron mills at Kameishi were devastated, the Shirakashi forest where we had planted seedlings, that has survived. And actually the Tabunoki trees survived the recent disaster the best. Um, I was actually amazed to see the areas that were badly hit by the tsunami in Minami Sanriku where a lot of lives were lost. Uh, pieces of plastic fabric were trapped and hanging from trees on hills and th this means that the tsunami was more than 10 meters high. And though everything around was ruined, the Tabunoki forest on the slope, that remained intact. And this huge old tabunoki tree is standing taller than us and though all the soil around it has been washed away by the tsunami, it's still here and something authentic, I mean it's long lasting and as you can see it endures even the harshest conditions. Mr. Miyawaki is the director of the Japanese Centre for International Studies in Ecology and an emeritus professor at Yokohama National University. As a researcher of plant ecology, he has investigated the potential of natural vegetation for a long time. He has been invited to speak about the benefits of creating authentic forests not only in Japan but also overseas. To date, he has visited 1,700 places and planted 40 million trees. Rin Noji is a famous temple in connection with the warlord Date Masamune. Mr. Hioki, the head priest of Rin Noji Temple, agrees with Mr. Miyawaki's opinion that we should build forests which grow naturally to each area to prevent the damage of a disaster. He has started a tree planting project, planting over 33,000 trees of 60 different varieties within the boundaries of his temple. Every living thing is connected and we can't live without the blessings nature gives us to take care of all our necessities, such as housing, food and clothing. In Japanese, itadakimasu is the expression of gratitude for being given a portion of life. More than society often voluntarily breaks off ties with nature and souls. The motto of Rinoji Temple is founding a temple where life and soul circulate, producing with their help. A force that should be there naturally will recover the ties with nature and connect souls together. Our present actions will create the future. What does Mr. Miyawaki mean by an authentic forest?
What is the difference between an authentic forest and other forests? In the past, uh, most of Japan, uh, probably about 98%, was covered by forests. And we, we can surmise this because there was a mild temperature level maintained from Hokkaido to Okinawa uh, throughout the year, and the amount of annual rainfall was conveniently distributed, and th this is actually quite rare in the world. However, looking back on the long history of the Japanese people, from the Jomon period onwards, we have been living by collecting nuts in the forest, gathering young herbs in fields, and picking up small fish and shellfish from beach areas. Most of the traditional forests now, the forests native to the area, uh, these forests from our memory, these have all been burnt or cut down in order to convert them to arable land or to build villages and towns. And the forests you see now uh, are those created by man, and these are very different from those that would be native to the area. According to Mr. Miyawaki, an authentic forest is made of miscellaneous trees which are native to the area. The tree is rooted deeply and firmly in the soil. Such a tree becomes the main tree of the authentic forest. The authentic forest has rich soil. There are many kinds of microorganisms, insects and animals. It is the base of every form of life. Forests have many roles. They produce clean air and water. They hold water and keep the environment in good condition. They also protect us from spreading flames and strong sandy winds. What is important now is greenery that is native to the area. Uh, in Europe and in Japan there are obviously forests and the, the kind of trees are different from one place to another but there is such a forest as one with, you know, as it were, an unpainted face and this is called potential natural vegetation. Let me explain this in plain terms. You can conduct theoretical research to find out what makes up the forests of Sendai and Kesenuma, for example, by looking at the sparse trees of a temple or a shrine that have been left by nature. The authentic forest is one formed by layers of natural environmental resources after human influences cease. This is called potential natural vegetation. This forest native to the soil has survived all the earthquakes which, which inescapably hit earthquake-prone Japan, as well as tsunamis, great fires, typhoons, floods, all of these which have occurred over the past hundreds of thousands of years. As I said before, something authentic is lasting and surviving. It's something that resists all natural disasters. Now these forests, they're getting very scarce and what I would like you to understand is that now everything, not only forests but food, drink, everything, it must be oriented towards authenticity. The beautiful beach with white sands and green pine trees is the traditional scenery of Japan. The green pine wood had been used as tide protection forests but many trees were uprooted by the tsunami. It has been said that pine trees do not have much holding power against tsunami and earthquake because their roots do not penetrate the ground in sandy areas as deeply as those of broad-leafed evergreen trees. Forests made up of one kind of tree are weak against a disaster. We hope that forests made up of pine trees and various supporting trees native to the area will hold much more resistance.
Many trees in the pine forests were uprooted and knocked over by the tsunami after the Great East Japan earthquake. These trees set adrift became a danger to people and buildings. Many lives and property were also washed out to sea by the strong pull of the receding tides. The pine trees planted to form a scene of Haksa Seisho were washed away in a moment and caused, actually caused secondary damage in areas around Tagajo and Sendai where we've carried out field surveys. Pine trees of 10 to 20 meters high with extremely large bases were carried several kilometers inland by the second and third waves of the tsunami, dragging away the remaining cars and houses. When planting trees, it's essential not to make the wrong choice of which trees to utilize. This is my area of expertise, and m most of the forests you see, you see now are regrettably very different from those native to the area. In plain terms, it's not too much to say that they're fakes. A tree planting ceremony was held at Borken Hiroba of Kaihin Park in Sendai on July 31st in 2011. Over 400 citizens of Sendai City joined the ceremony. And what we want to do is to plant a forest uh, to act as a green wall and trees to be selected to construct these uh, green walls would be tabunoki, shinoki and kashi or oaks uh, for the taller trees. And a number of semi-tall trees such as shirodamo and yabutsubaki uh, have also survived the tsunami very well. Uh, also kakuremino as you see here and uh, mochinoki. Among the shorter trees that's durable against sea winds we have uh, tobera and hamahisakaki. And by mixing a variety of seeds of these trees, uh, we can build green walls that protect lives. In other words, uh, forests of disaster prevention and environmental conservation. Uh, hopefully, these forests would offer some consolation uh, for the people who live in the desert-like wasteland that is some of the uh, tsunami-affected areas. Firstly, trees that are well adapted to the vegetation of the area are chosen. Various trees native to the area that stretched their roots deep into the soil survive together in natural selection and come to form a strong forest. These forests are at their highest level of natural strength and are resistant to disease and insects. Seedlings and pots are planted densely together. Weeding is necessary for the first two to three years but after this, no artificial maintenance is required. In 15 to 20 years, we will have a lush forest that will last for centuries. The forest becomes a green wall. It breaks up the tsunami, reducing its strength and lowering its speed and wave height, giving people more time to evacuate. When the tides recede, it stops people and property from being washed out to sea. According to data from the Ministry of Environment, the amount of debris left from the tsunami is almost 22.6 million tonnes, equivalent to half a year's waste from the whole of Japan. Mr Miyawaki proposes that we use this debris as a resource for planting the green tide embankment. So, of course, first, uh, poisonous substances in the debris must be removed, and this is a, just a matter of course. And uh, also, we have to we have an obligation to reuse what is still usable. Um, but, however, the results of our field surveys show that 90% of debris consists of mud containing predominantly wood. 
Incinerators are being constructed, costing hundreds of millions of yen, with the idea that the simplest way of disposing of this waste is to burn it. But this leads to an increase of CO2, which is regarded as one of the main sources of, of global warming, which is one of the greatest problems facing the world now. After removing waste material that is poisonous or non-biodegradable, a hole is dug, filled with debris and mixed with soil. A mound is made on top of the debris and soil for planting trees. The seedlings of broad-leaved evergreen native trees are placed on the mound in pots. In 20 years, there will be a rich forest that will help protect lives and property. The roots of these trees will grow deep in the earth and will not be easily uprooted. The higher and wider the mound is, the more strongly resistant it will be to a tsunami. The green tide embankment that protects life conforms to the laws of nature. The embankment itself is life. Until now, it has been considered right to change and adapt nature for human convenience using power and technology. The Great East Japan earthquake taught us this lesson. Science and technology are not meant to control nature, but to be used as pieces of wisdom making it possible for us to coexist with nature. Living with every kind of life leads to protecting ourselves. Now is the turning point of history. We have to shift from the age when materialism was central to an age where every life and soul will be loved tenderly. The green tide embankment that protects life is a wisdom for living with nature. Let's create the future together where we respect life and soul. Mr. Miyawaki's project, the green tide embankment, has already begun in cooperation with some enterprises and non-profit organizations. By December 2011, 200,000 of 16 kinds of natural seedlings native to the coast of Miyagi were produced. <laughs> Seeds of the tabunuki, which will be the main constituent for the green tide embankment, have been gathered from Tashiro Island, Ishinomaki and the Oshika Peninsula. These have started to produce 100,000 seedlings. With your cooperation, I would like to build an authentic forest of life. A forest extending 300 kilometers north to south would be a memorial for the lives lost in these terrible disasters. And it's also a chance for us to begin a new future. Together, I want us to plant 40 million trees across 1,400 sites. Let's collect together all of our successful knowledge to create a life-saving forest that we can be proud of. Let us do what we can do on these coasts stricken by the Great East Japan earthquake disaster. Us humans living arrogantly now, knocking all obstacles out of our way, it's us that must build this forest of life in order for me, for you, for all of us to survive. So please, let's, let's do this together. Many lives were lost as a result of the tsunami after the Great East Japan earthquake. We must rise to recover from the disaster. We must think of ways of living with all life. Our project, the Green Tide Embankment, is born out of the profound wisdom of mankind, creating a civilization that cares for life. We will be working on this project with our heart and soul for a future that serves to reconnect the ties between nature and humanity. <laughs>